Although Horizon Forbidden West has attracted a lot of comments since its launch, there are still big games to offer in the continuation of 2022 that could have a similar effect on critics and audiences. One of these games is God of War Ragnarok, which can easily be considered one of the most expected recent sequels, following one of the most acclaimed games of the last generation. Given the foundation that the previous version of the series succeeded in creating, it is easy to trust the creators in expanding and improving it, but the fans of this series each have their own expectations. The greatness and importance of the game has also increased these expectations. In this video, we're going to talk about some of these expectations. We want to turn our attention to what we don't want to see. God of War 2018 wasn't entirely without problems despite its many strengths. One of those that came to the eye of the old fans of the series was the low number of boss fight compared to the past. There were few crucial struggles with boss fight and there was plenty of time until the next fight. Even the small bosses created to fix this problem were overly similar and soon became repetitive. Of course, the Valkyrie were able to cover this flaw to a large extent. Many of us expect God of War Ragnarok to finish in large part, so we will be more disappointed by the lack of important campaigns and vital scenes than the previous version. Especially this time, we will see the latest version of the story of the Norse regions, which slaughters many of its mythology on the shoulders of Kratos. The diversity of enemies was another case that appeared lower in God of War 2018 than expected. Of course, the struggles of this game would never have been boring for you thanks to its powerful mechanical core, but a title as big and long as it needed more diversity in the enemies. God of War Ragnarok is expected to be much larger and longer, thereby requiring more diversity of enemies. In fact, the existence of various enemies that create unique challenges for gamers and take advantage of different powers and capabilities is essential for this game. Although this is true for almost all story-driven games, it is of particular importance to God of War Ragnarok, as there are many narrative responsibilities on its shoulders. In fact, this version must not only answer the questions that the earlier version produced and continue the lines of fiction that remained unfinished, including submissions, but also to complete the story of the Norse regions. When God of War 2018 released, many of us suspected that the story of the Norse regions would become a trilogy, taking into account its end and that it had not yet addressed many things. Now that Ragnarok has a responsibility to do all that in a game, it is vital to ensure that the story is not hasty in narrating its sections and important moments. To end the story of the Norse regions mentioned earlier, this case is also one of the game's narrative responsibilities. In addition to all the questions raised in the previous game and very high numbers, the game has a duty to answer the questions itself raises during its narrative. This hasn't always been an easy task, as there are many examples of disappointing endings to popular stories that slipped in this way. Given the perennial importance of this series in the story section and the extent to which fans consider Kratos, Atreus and what happens to them important, Ragnarok has a duty to do great in this section. Most likely, God of War Ragnarok will be a very long game, even longer than the 2018 version. In most cases, one of the most challenging things in long games is the speed of their process. To the extent that even the excellent games of this group such as Persona 5 are weak in this section. Although Ragnarok won't have nearly 100 gameplay hours like Persona 5, it still has to maintain a consistent trend in its two parts of gameplay and story. This is one of the things where the narrative responsibility of the game in ending Norse stories can benefit, because if it is as eventful and compact as necessary, there will most likely be no problem with the speed of the game process. The previous version was able to achieve a great balance in this regard. The game was an ideal soft reboot for the God of War series, allowing newcomers to experience it without worrying about the events of the previous games of the series. At the same time, we also saw a good sequence, largely based on past versions of the Greek era, pointing to their major events if necessary. Maintaining this balance in Ragnarok will be harder, as its overconnection with previous versions can bring the ending of the story of the Norse regions under the shadow of past stories. At the same time, given Kratos's past, the course of his personality and the way they might affect his relationship with Atreus, it would be impossible to disregard the titles related to Greece. At least we hope that the situation will be like this, for example, Kratos has not yet told Atreus about killing his wife and daughter in the past, and it would be very strange if that didn't happen later. The complete restructuring of the old series formula in God of War 2018 took place in a variety of layers, one of which was the mechanism of progress in the game. Despite the role-playing mechanics, from XP collection to upgrades and the crafting system, 
God of War 2018 is a good development on mechanism paper, but in practice and at least in a typical degree of hardness, this mechanism is not a vital part of the gaming experience. We expect Ragnarok to make progress in this sector. Looking at the capabilities and attacks of Runic that were available in the previous version, we find that Santa Monica Studio does not have a hard time providing different and influential upgrades and capabilities for players. It is hoped that similar ideas will be applied in the loot game section so that increasing the level and receiving new and powerful tools will not seem futile and create suitable options with a tangible variety. Although there is still no mention of Kratos' encounter with the end of his career at God of War Ragnarok, many theories have been suggested by fans that they have reasonable grounds for the high probability of this happening. You might say that a man with a past like Kratos can't have a happy ending, and the premise of his death at the hands of Atreus is in perfect agreement with the continued string of this series of games in the murder of the father at the hands of the son. And as a result, Santa Monica may decide to retire Kratos and from now on put Atreus a protagonist in the series. These are logical reasons for the possible end of Kratos at the God of War Ragnarok end. But with such an event, a big mistake is made, a much bigger mistake than Joel's death in The Last of Us Part 2, because Kratos is the face of this series. He is deeply rooted in the identity of this franchise, especially now that he has enjoyed an important depth and complexity that has made him a better and more attractive character. We all enjoy telling stories bravely and don't like anything more than that, but if these theories happen, many fans will be upset. Bye.